What is up guys, welcome to Barden. My name is Heinrich and today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make this 2D player platformer controller that I've been working on. The character is able to move around as such, jump with variable jump height and most importantly, jump off of walls and slide down walls. So, just like that. So let me show you guys how to make this. Okay, so let's just start by creating and setting up a new project. I'm just going to call this 2D Platformer Controller Tutorial. And I'm going to create it here. We're gonna set the template to 2D, seeing as you're working with a 2D project, and click Create Project. Now that a new project has been created, we can start by importing all the assets. I will include a download link for all the assets that I use. So we can right click in the, the project tab and say import new asset. Go to assets and I have a tile set. I also have just a couple of props for the map just so we can make it look good. And then I also have the character animations. Okay, now we need to change some settings in these uh, sprites that we imported. We can just select all of them, and then on the right over here, we can change the pixels per unit to 16. We can change the sprite mode to multiple. We can change the filter mode from bilinear to point no filter, and then change the compression to none and hit apply. Now we need to go through and uh, cut and or slice all these sprites into their different individual sprites. Let's start with the tile set. I'm going to click on Sprite Editor. And now this tile set is, all the tiles are 16 by 16 wide, so I can just say slice uh, grid by cell size, and then the cell size is 16 by 16. Then I want the pivot to be in the center. And I say slice. All the tiles have been sliced, hit apply, boom. And now we can just go through and do it for the different animations. Now the character animations uh, are all set in a 32 by 32 block. So we can do grid by cell size again and change it to 32 by 32 this time. Hit apply, go through and do it for all the different animations. Now to slice up the decoration items, I haven't found the best way to make sprite sheets for these yet seeing as I don't all fall within a 16 by 16 block size. Um, but I do have them laid up in a, in a certain manner. You can, you can just follow along. It doesn't really matter now. I'm probably gonna change these at some point. These are just for, just to make our scene look a little bit better while we work on it. So the first light post, we're going to slice like this. And if you click on it, the width should be 48 and the height should be 64. And we're gonna change the pivot to custom, change the pivot unit mode to pixels, and we want the pivot to be uh, 24 pixels in, and eight pixels up. And you'll see why in a second. This, is, this has to do with the uh, tile map system and how we can uh, put it into the tile, the tile palette. So this is our our big light post. Okay, and now for the small one, this one does fall in 16 by 16. So if we select the corner up there and slice it like this, we should have 16 by 16, perfect. Keep the pivot mode center, okay. So this is the wall light. And now for the tree, the tree we can just slice on the edges. The most important part is to take the um, to change the pivot to custom, and bring it halfway in, and then eight unit eight units up. Okay, and now these doors. The door is thirty two by sixteen, so we can just slice it like that. This is our open door, and we can bring the um, pivot again up eight. And now the open door will select, delete that one. 
like a corner. And it should also be uh, 16 pixels wide, just like that. Change the pivot to custom and bring it to the center of the bottom block. Perfect. Now we can hit, well, this is door open. Nope. Sorry. This is closed door. Okay. And then this is our tree. We can hit apply. And now we have all of our different sprites all sliced up and ready to use. Okay, now let's just organize the project a bit better by creating a sprites folder where we can store or where we can store all of our sprites. Okay. And let's go into the scene uh, folder and let's rename the scene and make this our main scene that we're going to be working with. And let's just save that. Okay, so now we can set up the map. To do this, we're going to use the tile map grid system that's part of Unity. So to get started, we'll come up here to Window, and then we'll say 2D Tile Palette. This will open a little window for us that we can just dock wherever is most convenient for us. I usually put it over here. Okay, now we're going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call this Tile Map. This is going to store all the tile map related files. Come back over here to the tile palette and say create new palette. We're going to call this tile set one. I'm going to say create and I'm going to store this in the tile maps folder. Except inside the tile map folder, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this palettes. Select folder, store it in there. So now if we go to our tile map folder, here's our palettes folder, here's the palette that's on the We can now drag our tile set onto the tile palette on the right. We need to uh, specify another location for it to store all little tile assets. We're going to go back into tile map and create a new folder called assets. Select this folder and it'll now generate all the tile assets. As you can see, all of our tiles are now on the tile palette here on the right. Now to start painting with this uh, tile palette, we need to come to the uh, hierarchy on the left, and we're going to create a new 2D object tile map. This is going to create a, a game object called grid, and underneath this grid is our first tile map. I'm going to rename this tile map to platforms, as this is going to <laughs> hold all of our platforms. Now to begin painting, uh, if we go to our tile palette over here, you can click on any of the tiles and you can just paint it onto the, onto the scene. Um, now let's just start off by painting a basic little uh, scene for us to use. To rotate the tile you're trying to place, you can use the square brackets on your keyboard to rotate it. And if you hold shift, you can flip it on either the X or the Y axis. So I am just going to flip it on the, on the Y axis. Okay, now that we have a basic little map going, let's put in the background. For this, we're going to use another tile map. So right click on grid, 2D object, tile map. We can rename this to background. And for the background for now, I'm just gonna make a giant gray square. 
So as you can see, it changed the active timeout to background automatically. You can select the uh, the object on the on the left, and it changes the active time map automatically. So let's select background, select our gray square, and let's just draw a big little cube. But as you can see now, our platform is hidden behind our background. So let's really take a look at our sorting layers. As you can see, both the platforms and the background are on the default sorting layer. So let's just create sorting layers for each of them by clicking on the drop down and saying add sorting layer. So let's create a layer called platforms and let's create another layer called background. Okay, now how this works is the, the further down on the list you are, the more in front of everything else you're going to be. So seeing as we want the platforms to be in front of the background, we can drag the platforms below the backgrounds layer. Now, if we go assign these sorting layers to our to our grids, this is platforms, and then backgrounds is backgrounds. And as you can see, the, the platforms now render in front of the background. If I were to go back to the sorting layers and drag platforms behind background, boop, you can see it goes behind the background. Perfect. Okay. Now we are going to uh, decorate the map a little bit more by dragging in our decoration items into the tile palette. So let's just start by doing that. I'm going to start with the lamp post. I'm going to put it there. Make a new asset for it. Also just keep everything in the assets folder. Okay. And our small light. I'm going to put you up there. It'd be kind of handy if in next update they make it stay in this folder. Okay, um, we want our tree. And lastly, we want our open door. Okay, I'm not gonna bother with the closed door now. That's going, that's just something I'm working on. I'm trying to get uh, an opening and closing door mechanic working. So this, uh, this character controller is a work in progress for me as well. As I work on it and add new things to it, I will continue to make tutorials on it. Okay, so for now, as you can see, this lines up pretty nicely with the grid. Our pivot lines up nicely within a center of one of these squares, and that is also the square where we place it. But now we have to make another map for it because we don't want this replacing, uh, replacing any of the background tiles. So let's just make a new tile map and I'm going to call this one um, yeah, decoration. Okay. Uh, I'm going to create a new sorting layer for it as well. This one's going to be called decoration, like that. Let's assign that sorting layer. And now we can paint this. Actually, let's really go back to the sorting layers. I want the decoration to render behind the platforms. You'll see, you'll see why. Okay, so now let's just put in a little bit of decoration just to make it look a bit better. I want a, a lamppost over there. And then I'm gonna put in a wall light over there. I'll put the open door for us over there. Let's paint a little tree, two trees down here like that. And then put a light down here. Boom, as you can see, we can quickly make the map look just a little bit better. Okay, now I want to have grass on the map as well. As you can see, I have two tiles for grass. Um, for this, we could put it on the decoration there as well, but we don't want it. Maybe we want some grass in front of the tree as well. So let's just make one more tile map. And I'm gonna call this, uh, we're gonna call this foreground, foreground decoration. Okay. And let's create yet another sorting layer for this. I'm going to 
to call this foreground decoration. Okay, and now while we're here, let's go ahead and create another layer and we're just going to call this player. So we're going to put the player on this layer and this is going to determine whether what it renders uh, in front of or behind. So I want the trees and stuff to render behind the player, but the grass, I might want that to render in front of the player. So I'm going to put the foreground decoration in front of the player. So let's go ahead and just paint some grass in here. Why? Oh, ha, I have not set foreground decoration yet. Okay, there we go. So here we have some grass going for us. Whoops. Might be easier to do this. I'm just gonna paint all the same tile and then take the other one and just go through and change some of them just to add a little bit of variation. Perfect, just like that. Okay, so now we have a nice little map going for us where we can start creating the player.